Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ali and in this video I would like to talk about my journey in learning and relearning Bayesian statistics. So the outline for this video is um, I would first talk about my first exposure to Bayesian methods or Bayesian statistics then afterwards I will talk about the relearning parts of the um, journey so how to update my priors and then afterwards i will talk about the key takeaways from this talk so previously i did my masters in artificial intelligence at the university of edinburgh in 2015 and this will be the beginning of the my journey in learning bayesian statistics so I believe it was during my master's that I had my first exposure to Bayesian statistics. So if you see the number here, it is the average total mark of the machine learning and the pattern recognition course uh, for 2014 and 2015. So basically a year before my enrollment at the university. Uh, it is not a good sign uh, for certain and it was said that half of the students enrolled in this class did not pass it in the previous year so maybe I should have dropped the course and opted for something easier but uh, right now I have to say that I'm grateful that I did take the course back then so if you want a taste of the course you can find it online um, this is the latest version of the machine learning and pattern recognition i believe uh, dr ian murray the main lecturer for the course is uploading the videos uh, for this year's course and just google mlpr informatics edinburgh and you will see this page um, but don't get me wrong, uh, even though the course uh, is notorious for the bad marks, uh, they are both a great lecturer. Back then, uh, the course was taught by Ian Murray and Chris Williams. So Ian's PhD thesis is in advances in Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. He also got the second place in a Kaggle competition about dark matter with Bayesian methods. And on the other hand, Chris is known for Gaussian processes for machine learning book, which was written with his colleague Carl Edward Rasmussen. And he is also well known for machine learning research as well. So I believe he is one of the most respected researchers uh, in the field. He is the director of research uh, at the School of Informatics as well. Uh, and he is an Alan, he is a Turing Fellow. So I found out later that both of them did their undergrad in physics at the University of Cambridge. So deriving formulas in the classroom are a walk in the park for them. But on the other hand, there's me not understand that, not understanding what they were trying to say uh, during the class. So I was really confused. I didn't know what they were talking about. So for a bit of background, uh, I did my undergrad in computer science, where I mostly deal with computer programs and some discrete mass, uh, just a little bit of mass after several years. So after several years of not using calculus and statistics, patient statistics can be hard to swallow, uh, especially during my masters. So uh, to give you an example, this is an example slide from the course back then uh, and I didn't have the slightest idea of what these figures mean. So what is the likelihood? How is that different from probability? What are priors or posteriors? Uh, how to read this figure? They were like ciphers to me. So eventually I just copied them to my notebook hoping that I would learn something from this figure. But uh, you'll see what happens later on. So uh, another example uh, from the course is that this slide. 
the figure is also taken uh, from the famous Kevin Murphy's book on machine learning. Uh, you can find it online. Uh, and it is one of the main books for machine learning courses, especially when you are covering Bayesian machine learning. And for sure, I did not understand uh, the figure as well, like the previous one. So, but one thing that I know for certain is that they are beautiful. Yes, uh, with so many colors and curves. But still, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, that's just about it. I, I know that they are beautiful, but I have no idea. Literally, literally have no idea what I'm doing during the course. So, like this example. Uh, so look at this figure. It's pretty, isn't it? I just like the, the, the many lines that you have to draw when you are doing Bayesian linear regression. So in fact, I believe that this is one of the main motivations of why I study Bayesian methods further later on. Um, maybe not a very good motivation in the first place, but you still at least need one, right? So yeah, that is the motivation for me. Um, and afterwards, the, con the course continued uh, with explanations of sampling methods, the Monte Carlo methods, the rejection sampling, important sampling, and the MCMC, Markov Chain Monte Carlo. Um, and yeah, this part still confused me uh, back then. So, uh, well, I know this averaging over samples for sure, the, the expected value. Uh, over samples, but that's just about it. Uh, the ergodicity, Markov chains, Hamiltonian, Monte Carlo, and all other technical terms seem alien to me back then. Uh, then things get even more obscure for me as we dive into variational inference. The energy-based model, the concept of free energy, and the other concepts borrowed from statistical physics were quite confusing for me. Uh, it, it was hard to, to understand this stuff back then. And also this thing, the introduction to Gaussian processes. Uh, to this day, I don't think I fully understand uh, Gaussian processes even now. Um, but I believe that there's something important in this uh, field, in this um, uh, material that I would find useful later on. So for those of you who have already mastered this, then congrats. Uh, hopefully I'll be there someday. Um, so kind of to sum up uh, the whole experience, at the beginning of the semester, when I heard about Bayesian, I would always associate it with naive Bayes. But as you may know, this is not the case at all. So for those of you who don't know it yet, there's even a model called Bayesian naive Bayes. So naive Bayes in this case is not the Bayesian framework we usually talk about when we are talking about Bayesian statistics. So um, after countless hours of studying and isolating myself in my flat and learning from these books and while trying to derive equations, finally the exam week came. And I was really hoping that I had prepared myself well for the exam for sure. But I still did not do well in MLPR. I certainly believe that this gift was me during MLPR exam. I kept flipping the exam papers, trying to find questions that I can answer, but to no avail. My final mark was below the average, but thankfully I still passed the course. Unfortunately, I still graduated from the University of Edinburgh a few months later. Not long after my graduation, I got a position as an adjunct lecturer at Universitas Al Azhar Indonesia. Um, and this job turns out to be helpful in my learning process. Uh, I would talk about more about this later on, but uh, yeah, to sum up, this is a good opportunity for T for me to review some of the previous materials and learn even more about uh, machine learning statistics and Bayesian statistics in particular.
So at Universitas Al Azhar Indonesia, I teach artificial intelligence, uh, data mining, and pattern recognition courses. Uh, I also covered some of the basic probability theories as well. So I got to teach things like neural networks and deep learning, uh, linear classifiers, support factor machines, etc., etc. And though I did not do well in my MLPR class, there's another course named Introductory Applied Machine Learning during my master's. So the math was not rigorous, uh, as rigorous as MLPR and the explanation was really clear. So it was quite easy for me to understand uh, the things the lecturer taught back then. So for those who are keen, you can see the videos on Victor Lafrenco's channel on YouTube. Just uh, use the keyword introductory applied machine learning Edinburgh, you will find the uh, lecture series there. But still, uh, having the understanding of machine learning without uh, properly knowing the underlying principles of probability and statistics, I, and, and how to move further to Bayesian machine learning, I, I feel that something is missing I, I I don't really f feel satisfied myself. So thus my journey in relearning Bayesian methods has begun. Uh, one year after working as a lecturer, uh, I joined Avery Rooms as a data scientist. Uh, this now defunct startup worked in the hospitality industry with a similar business model to all your rooms. Uh, you might heard of uh, OE rooms where you let uh, some of the rooms from a hotel um, to customers and using your own e-commerce and you standardize the rooms basically. So mainly uh, I aided the company in making strategic decisions among other things. I work mostly with marketing data and pricing data as well. So during this time, I tried to learn Bayesian statistics and watched this video by Jake van der Plas on uh, uh, Frequentist versus Bayesian and trying to understand what all the fuss is about. So you might have heard uh, before about Frequentist versus Bayesian and this talk uh, covers that nicely. So this shed some light to me, but there were things that I still could not wrap my head around as this talk uh, mostly deals with high level discussion about frequencies and patient analysis. So yeah, that's that. But then I found this magnificent book by Cameron Davidson Pillen. So who, it, uh, and I believe he's also giving a talk in this conference. So I really recommend you to watch this video as well. It, uh, it will be worth your time. And the book itself, it's, it's very good. Uh, I really love this book and I will always recommend this book to other people who want uh, to learn Bayesian methods as well. So in the book, uh, I found some really nice examples. So this is one of the figures in his book. And this is about the change in the expected number of text messages received after a while. So let's, let us think for a second. Does this resemble a problem you know of? I mean, previously, have you ever thought about something like this? Uh, the when did a change happen? So a change in the number of ex uh, text messages, a change in the number of tweets, a change in the number of um, I don't know uh, electrical electricity usage or something like that. So I believe that you have asked a similar question like this in your lifetime, and this book. Uh, gives a really nice example that you can later toy on with your own data set. So these are some of the plus points from the book uh, from my point of view. The first one, the book gives simple and relatable examples and it is written in a hacker first mindset so you can see snippets of code that you can play around with. And also, this book is written with a top-down approach, as it avoids giving too much details about the sampling methods in the first couple of chapters. So, 
you could understand the basic idea of Bayesian methods without really uh, talking about the Markov chain Monte Carlo uh, at first. So, and uh, the biggest plus point for me for sure is the use of PyMC as the main framework. Now, uh, I have tried to double in TensorFlow probability and Pyro as well, but to this date, uh, I really like the API design of PyMC3. Uh, but I might be biased though, since this is also the first probabilistic programming library that I use. So now I have finally found my motivation. So the, the, the book, the Debation Methods for Hackers book, is really good that I can see things around me through a different pair of glasses. I can see uh, Bayesian uh, cases around me. Yeah, or, or uh, cases or problems that I can see with the Bayesian perspective uh, from now on. So for, for example, this uh example from the book about how to order and submissions um to where you update your prior uh, based on the upvote ratios on different submissions i also saw a similar problem at every rooms in the form of search ranking so how to rank properties from review scores uh, with Bayesian statistics uh, basically uh, every property will have their own number of reviews with different review scores and you want to uh, rank them all uh, within a city or within a um, province. So how would you uh, rank them the best? And that example of ordering the Reddit submission certainly helped me to uh, work on this as well uh, and I also wrote an article uh, later on on the company's technical blog about Bayesian inference using PyMC3 you can still find it now on Medium so go to medium.com slash ad-science uh, but as I've mentioned before the company has now shut down due to COVID-19 so there will be no more posts there so anyway, uh, I also learned uh, something about Bayesian optimal pricing during my tenure at the company. Uh, and this blog post by Chad Scherer uh, introduced me to bottle feeding and diagnostics. Um, you should really check it out. And also, finally, I got the chance to draw something beautiful like this as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I also gave a talk on behalf of the company about probabilistic programming uh, later on uh, during my tenure, you know, tenure at the company. And basically, I advocate the use of Bayesian methods in our work at the company uh, to my colleagues. So in retrospect, I, if I compare the two main resources I use when learning Bayesian methods early on, these are the main things that I would point out. Uh, the first one is the MRPR course is built uh, with a theory first mindset, whereas the Bayesian methods for hackers, as the name goes, uh, is written in a hacker first mindset. So uh, with the theory first mindset, you need the foundations first and give proofs and things like that. So you basically need mathematical rigor there. But on the flip side, uh, Bayesian methods for hackers uh, includes executable code. So you can play around with uh, some examples uh, and maybe use an example of your own. And then uh, the, the last one is that uh, MLPR course uh, was built with a bottom up um, approach. So, like I said before, it, it mainly deals with the foundations first, the nitty gritty of patient inference, sampling methods, etc. And on the other side, the basic methods for hackers book uses a top down approach where you are given use cases uh, and examples and how things uh, would work will unreveal later on uh, in the book. So 
it doesn't end here. Uh, the Bayesian methods for hackers book is just the beginning of the relearning part of my journey. I learned that I have to review and brush up my probability and statistics understanding uh, even more. So for that particular purpose, I reviewed some probability course courses and found this course exceptionally easy to understand. Uh, yeah, this uh, Stanford CS109, probability for computer scientists, uh, as the name goes, and the CS109 course is tailored to suit a computer scientist's needs. Um, the slides are beautifully designed, especially in this particular term, the summer 2017 term. And examples are relatable to computer scientists. I think uh, Dr. Will Monroe did a great job here. Uh, you should really check out the slides. Uh, they are beautiful and uh, playful. Uh, and I found it quite interesting that you can put so much effort into making uh, slides uh, for the lectures. And also, I recommend this course, the Hard Part uh, Start 110 course by Professor Joe Blitzstein, where he covers probability theories. Um, there's also a book he wrote uh, with his with his colleague for the course as well. So. You should check that out as well. Uh, it is free and available online. You should uh, also do some of the um, exercise in the book as well. Uh, I also followed this lecture series entitled uh, Statistical Thinking by Richard McElrath, um, where he explains how to apply Bayesian statistics to evolutionary anthropology cases, some interesting cases uh, in the book and in the lecture series as well. Uh, overall, I recommend his book and the lecture series as it nicely covers Bayesian statistics from the very beginning. Uh, he uses R though uh, and he used his own package rethinking for the lecture, but people have ported the code to PyMC3 as well, so uh, you can find it online. But I tried to port the code myself as an exercise and you can do that as well to learn uh, even more. Uh, the example notebooks from PyMC3 documentation can also be a very good learning resource as well. You can also see the discourse page to ask questions and discuss ideas about uh, Bayesian methods and PyMC3. Uh, and after all of this, I finally learned to love Bayes even more. As an alumni of the same university as Reverend Thomas Bayes, I hopefully I did not let him down. Uh, and I can happily say that I can understand this slide now. So yes, there's a success uh, for me. <laughs> so uh, we finally came to the final part of this talk. Um, the key takeaways from this talk uh, are find your motivation uh, and there are two main paths, math first or program first and try it out. So, in the fire motivation, uh, I would say that you might need a different one from mine. It is subject to your experience so far, after all. So I must say, um, you have to find it uh, yourself. But some exposure to real cases first before deep dive into the theory would be beneficial uh, from my point of view. And if you don't have any problems with understanding formulas or deriving equations, you should benefit more from reading books like Kevin Murphy's Machine Learning or David McKay's Information Theory. Otherwise, you should really consider reading Bayesian Methods for Hackers or Statistical Rethinking, as uh, I believe it is easier uh, with some example codes in, in the book. And finally, try it out. As they say, experience is the best teacher. So hopefully you'll gra fully grasp the idea after toying around with some examples. And particularly for my case, uh, learning by teaching is extremely effective. Uh, during my tenure as a, an adjunct lecturer at Universitas al in Indonesia, I learned some of the basic stuff as well. So the probability theories and the machine learning stuff and how to combine them and how to present them clearly to my students actually helped me to 
understand them even better. So you should try it out as well. Give talks like this or uh, just um, discuss with your friends and advocate the use of Bayesian statistics. Then you might learn something uh, from that. So to conclude, if things are hard for you right now, please remember that this too shall pass. Probably. So uh, thank you very much for listening to my story, uh, for listening to my journey so far. Hope you enjoyed this talk and I'm looking forward to the Q&A session. Thank you. Bye bye.